firstly, why did it have to be what? It was closer to 10 o'clock, eh? It was closer to 10 o'clock this, uh, this announcement last night. At the end of the night, it was a race between Cyril Ramaphosa and me taking my Zolpidem, which I do every night at 9 o'clock to help me to sleep. I'm a terrible sleeper, so I am on medication to help me sleep. And I take it every night around about the same time. Usually it's about at 8.30, but last night I thought, let me wait till 9 o'clock. Oh, it was touch and go there because once that half life kicked in, <laughs> once that half life kicked in, I, I nearly missed it. But 32 ministers, 43 deputy ministers. It's not the largest cabinet because the cabinet is only made up of ministers who report to the president, but it's the largest collection of ministers and deputy ministers that we've ever seen in this country. The Jacob Zuma, Cyril Ramaphosa government had um, 33 ministers. We have 32 ministers now, but we have 43 deputy ministers. So collectively, an executive that is made up of 75 members, ministers and deputy ministers. What did Cyril Ramaphosa say? When he took office, he, that he wanted to uh, trim the number of executive positions. He couldn't do that because now he has so many other appetites to feed from GNU partners. What did the Democratic Alliance say when Cyril Ramaphosa took over from Jacob Zuma in 2018? They called it a patronage cabinet costing South Africa millions of rands. The Democratic Alliance is now a member of the largest collection of ministers and deputy ministers that we've ever seen in this country. I guess it's compromise. I guess it's give and take. The thing is about ministers and what they need to do to do their job is, is if they succeed, we all succeed. You know, so if they do well at their job, Effecting service delivery, well done. We all succeed in this country, particularly the most vulnerable in this country. If they fail, they move on to something else. And it is the most vulnerable in this country that continues to not receive that delivery. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly buoyed. I'm fairly buoyed by some of the announcements and some of the decisions that have been made for people across various political parties who find themselves in cabinet. I, 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 I appreciate the work of Soli Malazzi of the Democratic Alliance. He's an incredible and effective spokesperson. He knows a thing or two about not only government communications, but also the digital technologies that must see a South African economy grow. So I'm largely buoyed by his appointment as the Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies. Jose Enzo Ramachopa. Now, not only Minister of Electricity, but also the Minister of Energy. Cyril Ramaphosa splitting the departments of Mineral Resources and Energy. It's now called Minerals and Petroleum Resources. That's still controlled by Gwedi Mantashi. But Jose Enzo Ramachopa, now the Minister of Electricity and Energy. Aaron Motswaledi, what do the people of South Africa say? We need a doctor to be the Minister of Health, and now you have two. Aaron Motswaledi, Joe Pathla. Minister and Deputy Minister of Health, respectively. Uh, I'm sure, and I've spoken to a couple of people within the broader tourism economy, they've been quite satisfied with the work of Patricia DeLol over the last five years. So she sees continuation in the tourism department. I'm very, very happy for a person like Parks Tau, probably the last great mayor of the city of Johannesburg. He is now the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition. Barbara Creasy. Um, mixed messages from the people that I know who work in environment, conservation. She's now the Minister of Transport in this Republic of South Africa. It's just some of the names that, that stand out for me. Who remains, though, is a person like Tandi Mambatlale. She used to be a staunch Zuma supporter. She now remains as a Deputy Minister of Housing. David Maslobo, remember, he was a former Minister of Intelligence, State Security in South Africa. He was Jacob Zuma's key man. Somewhat been neutralized by Cyril Ramaphosa. He brings with him a, a, a fair bit of a constituency in Pumalanga. So I 
probably think he's been largely neutralized by Cyril Ramaphosa and now continues to be a deputy minister in this particular government. But your thoughts, 021-446-0567. You can drop me a WhatsApp, 072-567-1567. Stephen Inaisner says, John Stearnaisen, I think, was expecting deputy president. I think a bit of egg on his face with agriculture. Best appointments are Peter Hrnewald as correctional services and Leon Schreiber. Uh, who is also an astounding, um, uh, outstanding appointment, the new Minister of Home Affairs. David Maslobo, however, remains, must have something on Cyril, or maybe it's Cyril trying and has neutralized a person like David Maslobo. But I don't think the Democratic Alliance could be too happy with the series of appointments. Uh, none of the departmental departments that I have actually looks at forward planning economic transformation. So all the key drivers of a forward-looking economy, they do not have control of. They do have a deputy uh, finance position. Um, Ashur Surapen from the Democratic Alliance is one of the two deputy ministers in the Ministry of Finance. But no finance, no DTI, no human settlements, no transport, no public enterprises, no water, no no energy. Essentially, the Democratic Alliance is running the operations of this country, the day-to-day operations, which is very, very important. Running a Department of Home Affairs, running a Department of Basic Education, running a Department of Public Works and Administration, Public Works and Infrastructure. I think it's very important portfolios, but they're running the day-to-day operations of this country.